Today on the Tapping Show, Vivek on Stopping TV ads goes viral on X. Pizza Hut franchise to lay off thousands of employees due to a California law increasing the minimum wage from $4 an hour to $20 an hour. EV startups are starting to run out of capital. Zoo Lily is shutting down. Bud Light and Budweiser Christmas trees both fall flatter than their beer. Wayfair CEO is roasted for saying that your employees need to work hard. And Chevy Blaze EV sales are paused due to a software error. All of that and much more on the Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of Topping Show is sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added reseller and services company with a special proficiency in IT security. Heck, I see their founder at least twice a day. Gotta say he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's a joke. If you're an IT leader or business owner, you can reach the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of December, so click that button. I greatly appreciate it. Now, going over to the business part of the podcast, you have EV startups starting to run out of charge, pun moderately intended. Now, it shouldn't be too surprising when you look at the EV category and the EV industry and all the startups. We've had three fail thus far. You've had Lordstown Motors. They went defunct earlier in 2023. That was an instance in where you had a General Motors factory in Lordstown, Ohio, which A plus for marketing. They did actually have a good name for a company name. They actually were going to close that down. They believe it previously made the Chevy Cruze Eco, which the best ones came with stick shift, obviously. But, <coughs> excuse me, you had an instance where instead of shutting down the factory, they sold off the factory, John Moore sold off to a startup, and they were going to build an EV truck there. Now, due to a myriad of complexities and issues, that company went bankrupt. You also had Proterra, as well as, where's the last one? Electric Last Mile Solutions. They've all gone belly up. Or, perhaps better metaphor might be lithium ion charged fires. And when you look at the competition, they're starting to run out of capital. And if we pull up some of their stock prices, kind of look at their, you know, one year trends, let's pull them up really quick. So Luce is probably the best known luxury one. <coughs> I use luxuries in brackets because personally I've never buy, I never consider something disposable to be luxury. One of the reasons why a Rolex is timeless, pun moderately intended, is because it's handmade, one of the few items you can actually purchase in life where all the components are actually engineered and manufactured in house. And those things will last quite literally generations. You can hand it down to your children, to your children's children. I mean, Rolex Submariner is timeless. And yes, ironically enough, it's actually less accurate than this free Garmin my friend gave me a couple years back. But it's a piece of mechanical engineering. It's pretty neat in and of itself. I think that, as well as it being a status symbol, <coughs> excuse me, that's a luxury timepiece. I mean, that's that's a luxury makes that might be worth buying. Lucid is an EV. And by its very nature, again, I have a little caveat every time we talk about EVs, we might have some fascinating, great magical technology tomorrow that make them not disposable pieces of garbage. But right now, they're all going to just crash and burn eventually. You look at old Japanese cars, they last 400, 500,000 miles, a million miles. All cars that hit a million miles are usually Toyotas or Hondas, and they're all powertrained. Their powertrain is always an internal combustion engine, preferably with a stick shift so you have a little bit of fun actually smile while you're driving. Now, nevertheless, some people do prefer luxury items that are disposable. Lucid, I believe, starts from ninety thousand to hundred to like two hundred fifty thousand dollars for an electric vehicle sedan, which again, some people do enjoy. Not enough yet to make the company profitable since they lost about at least four hundred twenty-five thousand dollars per vehicle last fiscal quarter. So not doing great in that regard. Now, again, so Lucid Motors, their one-year trend, their stock is down thirty point two four percent. <laughs> That's not great. They're currently trading for $4.32 per share. Now, let's pull up another more popular company, Rivian. They they did achieve a good business market in terms of they actually have product on the streets. So that is a big hump to overcome in the manufacturing industry. And a lot of EV companies, truth be told, they crash and burn before they even get to production and scale. Now, Rivian, they're at $23.63 per share. In the past year to date, they're actually up 36.33% since I, in the past year to date. In the past year, they're up 33.26%. And we look at other companies, we'll take a look at one more. Let's see, I think they're at a dollar. What's Fisker up to or down to more appropriately? Fisker. Now, ironically enough, I actually do know someone who actually, anecdotally speaking, I only know one person who bought a Fisker and they actually did recently. One of my friends got the Fisker 
I forget what they call them because their names are rather inspiring or good at marketing for me to remember it, but they got the little electric SUV. Now, granted, Fisker doesn't make it, they design it in a third party. Is it Magnus? There's actually a third party. They make vehicles for several automotive companies. Think of it as white labeling for vehicles. Truth be told, you don't just white label coffee these days, a phenomenon in which you have a company manufacturer product for someone else's specifications. Now, Fisker's at $1.46 per share. And what's their past year to date? Diesel lease. So they're down negative 78.48%. Now, other companies like Tesla, they made they started making profits a couple fiscal years ago. They're pretty solid in that regard. But the EV startups, they're some of the cracks are starting to expose. So this comes to us thanks to Emma Thorne over on LinkedIn. And they note that, let's see here, the Wall Street Journal analysts, at least 18 EV and battery startups that went public since 2020 and 2022 are on track to run out of money by the end of next year. At least and then they also know at least three companies, the Lordstown Motors, Proterra, Electric Last Mile Solutions, have filed bankruptcy. The huge obstacles being manufacturing problems and rising cost. And that's not the only issues. It takes a couple of sentences to get into the other substance, where they note that demand for EVs also isn't huge as many companies originally expected. No shit, Sherlock. Pardon the French. But some of us don't like disposal of products, which is why, personally, I love my a little stick shift with this, you know, Little Civic SI, it's got a stick shift, also known as manual transmission. The most fun you'll ever have, bar none, driving a vehicle. Yeah, demand is not really there. The adoption rate is slowing down dramatically. The biggest category right now where Americans are starting to be more interested in is hybrid technologies. That's where Toyota, again, read the room properly. The, Toyota invested, I believe, $8.8 .8 billion into hybrid technologies, and that's where they called it. That's where it's going to be future for many consumers. Granted, am I a fan? No, because again, you're introducing more technologies, more complexities. A big lithium-ion battery that'll be defunct, also known as it'll go bad, make the whole vehicle basically worthless or darn near. So no, personally I'm not a fan, but I also believe, hey, if the consumer wants that, give them the option. I just don't like how the government is outlawing ICE engines, also known as internal combustion engines, and take away that choice for so many consumers. Now they know that a lot of these companies are running out of cash. I know earlier this year, Lucid stock crashed in part because they had to raise more capital. Same thing with Rivian, where Rivian said they needed to raise like, $1.2 more billion dollars in capital, and they had convertible notes issued. So these companies are really starting to run out of capital. And 2024, again, politics aside, to write who the heck you're voting for, at the end of the day, political uncertainty is a huge driver in the business community, and even for consumers as well. There's a lot of people not knowing, well, is, my, is my business category gonna be regulated out of existence? Or are there gonna be maybe some deregulation in my industry that might actually bolster some innovation and actually increase the market value and market opportunity for our industry category? There's a lot of uncertainties. Then you have also, you know, inflation hurting everyone. It's 40 year high hyperinflation is getting ridiculous in the United States. And a lot of people are barely making their bills these days. Do they really wanna go out and spend tens of, not even tens, 50, 100, $200,000 on a disposable car? And granted, my parents still drive a 2001 Honda Accord that they bought new. It still runs because Honda's that awesome at making an internal combustion engine. It'll be interesting and sad to see. I think the brand will be chiseled away in terms of reliability subsequently because of a couple of recalls as well as pushing hybrid technologies with hybrids being inherently less reliable. But at the end of the day, and again, maybe, maybe I'm not reading the room right. I guess pun moderately intended since I'm in an office, so it's my office is, or technically a room. But it's an instance where I can't help but think, are these companies going to be acquired? Are they just going to crash and burn? I mean, are you planning on buying a vehicle in 2024? I mean, Lord knows I'm not. Most people I know, anecdotally speaking, they're all trying to conserve every penny they can and trying to pinch every penny. They're trying to make their vehicles last longer, which thankfully many of them were prudent enough to buy an internal combustion engine, so that is a possibility. So it'll be interesting to see, again, you have the government, a lot of these, another issue with the EV community that they don't bring up this, in this article, some of these companies are running out of subsidies. So a, one of the big reasons is, reasons that consumers are buying these vehicles is they're getting, a, I think it was a $7,500 tax credit. And without that, it's even less incentive to buy these disposable vehicles. So, and again, I say, keep saying disposable, that's the technology we currently have. Tech moves very quickly. We may very well have a new material, new process, that comes out to make these vehicles long-term, it's not really investment because they go down in value, but a long-term stable asset. 
where again, it could potentially last 20, 30, 40 years. I, I can't fathom what it would be, but again, engineers make phenomenal things. So it very well may happen. But again, we're, we're talking about the theoretical, I'm talking about the materials and the vehicles and the solutions that we have here and now. So it'll be interesting. Let me know in the comments, are you planning on actually buying a vehicle in 2024? Do you think these companies are just going to go belly up with ever increased competition with, again, because you have likes the automotive manufacturers, they're going into EVs as well. So it's one of those things where, again, the startups, there's that allure of, oh yeah, they have the first to market in some cases. I think the Rivian was the first major producer of EV pickups. Correct? I know General Motors made the electric pickup in the 90s for a prototype. But let me know in the comments, that's another big threat to their, what used to be a competitive business advantage. You have legacy automotive companies catching up. So it'll be interesting to see where it goes from there. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Again, we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of December. So if you click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, leaving a like also helps the video with the algorithm and the feedback with the comments is greatly appreciated. It lets me know how I can make the show better and better. Also, and lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone, just stay safe, fight the good fight.